Hello, hi. Uh, my name is Alif Dalino Sulaiman, and I'm from University Putra, Malaysia. So uh, before, um, I'm going to talk about the um, sustainable food processing using high pressure processing. So before I start, I would like to just introduce a bit about myself. Uh, firstly, my name is uh, Dr. Alif Dalino Sulaiman. I am actually a lecturer uh, in uh, the Department of Process and Food Engineering, University Putra, Malaysia. So uh, here is my email, you can see on the screen, and uh, you can call me Alif anyway. So uh, this is my outline for my presentation today. So we are going through a background of high pressure processing, and then we're going to talk about the sustainability of food processing and how that's, uh, that the definition of the sustainable food processing is. And then how does this uh, high pressure processing contribute to the uh, sustainable food production? And finally, I will share with you uh, the case study uh, of uh, uh, preservation of milk using high pressure processing. All right, so what is basically high pressure processing? So high pressure processing is also called as the high hydrostatic pressure or pascalization, all right? And it actually can be used at a non-thermal or low temperature uh, processing. Uh, it can produce a safe product, which is a safety, uh, food safety quality, and also not uh, jeopardizing the quality of the product. Uh, in this uh, high pressure processing, uh, the pressure is actually uh, isotactic, uh, which is the pressure will be homogeneously and uh, how to say con uh, consistently every uh, is actually being forced in every direction of your products. So this will actually uh, make the processing uh, do not damage the uh, overall product, um, then it will not change the shape and the structure of the product, regardless of the size and shape. All right. And finally, uh, this uh, high pressure processing, the main uh, principle, uh, working principle that is actually being um, known for this high pressure processing is actually the Le Chatelier principle. This, uh, uh, this principle basically is actually saying that uh, change in volume is preferable, uh, which is leads to the change in the reaction molecular arrangement because uh, whenever we, you, ha you have a reaction that is in equilibrium, uh, if you want to change uh, the, 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 the system, it will actually prefer uh, the change to the uh, lowest energy, all right? All right, uh, so to imagine the pressure that we want to exit to our product using high pressure processing, we can actually imagine it as we have a 200 elephants, which is one elephant is actually 3,000 3, kilogram each, sitting on a piston uh, with a diameter of 0 0.1 meter squared, and that is actually being imposed to a uh, what we call chamber with your product uh, or uh, with your food product, all right? So that is actually will produce about uh, about 700 megapascal or 7,000 bar of pressure in the chamber, and this will actually provide the pressure to your food and actually will actually do that uh, preservation process that required for food safety and also to make sure that uh, because it is uh, no uh, temperature, then it will actually retain the quality, all right? Okay, so here is the schematic of the high pressure processing. So basically, this is a general, uh, what we call the schematic. Uh, so you have a top and bottom closure uh, for that uh, reactor or for that uh, chamber. And that chamber is uh, called a pressure chamber where it, it needs to sustain up to 1000 megapascal. So inside there is actually a simple holder where you can see the black, uh, like a, a rectangle shape inside the uh, sample is actually your packaged food, all right? And then you could also have the temperature control jacket uh, at the side of that uh, uh, chamber, and um, that will actually provide you if you need to do uh, uh, combined thermal and pressure treatment. Of course, uh, to increase the pressure, we will use the high pressure, uh, high pressure intensifier palm that will actually palm the water. The water is actually the pressure medium that will actually increase the pressure in the chamber. All right? And also, all the um, data will collect it to the computer, uh, the data for the pressure and also the data for the temperature. This pressure temperature is, uh, data is required for safety purposes to make sure that your product is actually being processed to the level that required based on the high pressure processing, similar to what we have in sterilization, uh, canning, all right? 
All right, so here is some of the, uh, uh, what we call the different types of processing that we can actually apply by using high pressure processing at different pressure and different temperature. So your Y axis is actually the temperature in degrees Celsius and your X axis is your pressure in megapascal. So you can see that here at different pressure, there are different types of processing that we can employ using high pressure processing. This is also uh, similar to when you change the temperature. Of course, this high pressure processing, actually when you combine with thermal, you can use the temperature lower than normal temperature that is used for thermal processing. That actually will help in terms of the quality of the product. Uh, you will actually want to have a uh, safe, safe product, yeah? and, but also you want to also have a quality product that uh, will actually retain the nutrition like a fresh light -like product. All right? Okay, so here are some of the uh, application to food products uh, that is available in the market now. And uh, you can see here there are ready-to-eat food products such as the tapas, guacamole, and also some uh, ready-to-eat uh, uh, food such as uh, meat, uh, uh, chicken uh, breast, and so on. And also you have uh, 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 fruits and greens drinks where they process the, 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 uh, what we call the, the drinks in high pressure processing to retain its original quality, taste like you eat the real fruits or wages, all right? And then the other uh, application is actually the meat and seafood product, all right? So when you can see here, there's a lot of like a uh, uh, product uh, such as the, uh, uh, what we call the preserved um, meat and also uh, seafood, yeah? And, can, and also the popular, when, when uh, high pressure processing start to be uh, commercialized or popularized, uh, one of the, uh, the, the interesting um, what we call uh, properties of this high pressure processing is actually it makes the uh, de, uh, sh uh, de shelling uh, or meaning that you remove meat from shell or the mollusk of the um, uh, such as prawn or king prawn uh, easily and crap all right so that is the example here uh, in the um, uh, right bottom of the um, slides all right so you can see that the meat is out but you could also have that uh, easily removed so it doesn't um, uh, what we call damage the meat so this is what we want uh, for um, usually for seafood basically all right okay so because we want to talk about how this high pressure processing actually relates to sustainable food processing so i would like to start with the um, understanding of what is sustainable food cycle okay so this actually on the slide now is actually um, the the sustainable food cycle all right so it is it will start with the production and then processing uh, distribution consumption and recycling these should ha have a closed loop so to make sure that there is no waste being uh, produced okay so of course each of these process will actually provide uh, to the environmental impact based on the um, greenhouse gases emission and uh, uh, the use of energy basically. So what we want to talk more here is actually different, um, uh, different uh, section of the sustainable food cycle will actually uh, contribute to different level of the greenhouse gases. So as you can see on the slide, of course, 70% is actually provided from the agriculture activity um, uh, to produce food from uh, vegetables, from the fresh food, from the um, farm and so on. And 10% and 15% is actually from the processing. 7% is uh, from the uh, distribution because you want to bring the product from your factory to other places. And the final one is actually from the uh, waste disposal, which is 4% out of the 100% the of the uh, greenhouse gases being produced. So, but we want to focus in the processing part. So 10% is actually from the manufacturing and food and 5% is actually from packaging. So we want to look how this can actually be reduced by using um, non-thermal processing or high pressure processing uh, as at specific, all right? Okay, so what uh, basically, how we define a sustainable food processing. So food, sustainable food processing is actually to process the food in environmentally friendly and socially responsible manner. So, and also this is actually relates to the reducing of uh, the use of resources and utilities such as water, energy, uh, minimizing waste, uh, the pollution, um, using sustainable raw material from uh, sustainable agriculture and ensuring fair treatment uh, to workers. And also to actually to provide uh, a process where you can actually have the most out of your product, meaning 
you don't have to uh, fortify your product uh, more because uh, when you use like a non-thermal uh, technology, it will actually uh, preserve your, the quality as a fresh like product and there is no need for you to increase or uh, imp uh, uh, add more of the uh, nutrients uh, if possible, right? So you can actually get the most out of a product, okay? So what, what we can say about this as actually is that sustainable food processing technique can include non-thermal processing, uh, fermentation and also precision agriculture. This is some of the um, sustainable food processing technique that can be applied uh, in order to make sure that we have a, a sustainable food uh, cycle or sustainable food processing. All right? Okay, so how does HPP uh, or high pressure processing promote sustainable food processing? So basically, um, generally energy uh, use for HPP typically uh, is low compared to the thermal, uh, conventional thermal treatment. This is because of the use of heat in thermal requires uh, high uh, energy intensive uh, 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 technology to actually provide the heat. So more energy is required for thermal processing. Uh, as compared to high pressure processing. Uh, of course, uh, the other thing is actually the use of the uh, utilities like uh, the steam, the water and so on. That could also like uh, contribute to the uh, reduction in this uh, area as well. Uh, and next is actually the carbon emission. As high pressure processing might not need as extreme temperature as the uh, conventional heat uh, heating, uh, you, uh, we can actually reduce uh, the carbon emission uh, to a lower level. All right. So because of that, we can actually lower the carbon footprint as it uses uh, less energy compared to uh, thermal, where sometimes we need steam and so on to actually, uh, you know, uh, to uh, uh, process the food uh, using uh, heating. All right. The next one is actually the food waste. High pressure processing can extend the shelf life of food product, reducing food waste. So, uh, of course, we also um, reduce the waste from chemical as well because we would not uh, need more chemical to be inserted to the uh, food product or fortify it to uh, uh, the product because of the high pressure processing have already retained the whole um, the whole uh, nutrition that is available in that. Um, uh, food okay and this is also re related to carbon emission when you have a lower uh, waste then uh, carbon emission will be reduced because there is no need for uh, the processing of the the waste okay or or, or less or reduced uh, uh, waste so that it less carbon dioxide is uh, uh, will be released due to the uh, waste uh, treatment all right uh, okay, next is actually the nutrient retention. I've been uh, explaining this a few times already and uh, nutrient uh, retention for HPP is high uh, as it will not, this uh, technology will actually not uh, affecting the uh, nutrition uh, that is available in the food, alright? So compared to, to heat treatment, okay? So that will actually help in terms of uh, making sure that uh, minimal uh, treatment can be uh, used and also uh, no waste uh, being produced. All right. So of course, uh, here you can see that there are three types of SDG that I think uh, which is related directly to the um, uh, what uh, we are going to talk today, uh, high pressure processing as sustainable food uh, production. Okay, one is actually the zero hunger because uh, this uh, sustainable development goal for zero hunger is basically to provide food available to, uh, to the people. Uh, so meaning that high pressure can actually promote that uh, in terms of high nutrient uh, product and then good health and well-being. Uh, HPP has, has been known to produce uh, drinks, uh, or herbal, herbal drinks or, or you know like a, a how to say um, the drinks that can actually promote uh, healthy lifestyle, healthy lifestyle, and also because of this uh, less use of energy, uh, reduce the uh, carbon dioxide uh, emission uh, and waste is actually we can also promote uh, the responsible consumption and uh, production. All right. Okay, so here are some of the uh, HPP on sustainable food production. You can see here that there are like several uh, contribution that can be. Uh, can be provided by using high pressure processing at different types of application. One is actually, of course, food safety because when you do to, when you do process food, the main main thing is actually to to have a safe food. So food safety is the main criteria, uh, and we can see that of course there's a lot of literature saying that uh, food safety is not compromised because of. Uh, high pressure at low temperature or, uh, or, or what we call um, medium temperature can actually promote inactivation of um, microorganisms, uh, viruses, um, enzyme, and also uh, mole and spores. All right. 
And also for uh, environmental sustainability, you can see that uh, some papers also show about re the reduce of food waste uh, and it contribute to the uh, reduction in the overall food waste uh, produced. And the other one is actually packaging. Uh, the effect on uh, food packaging, it seems that minimal effect has been shown um, for uh, packaging material uh, by using high pressure processing. So uh, you don't have to have a lot of packages uh, to actually process this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, food through high pressure processing. Another one is actually economic sustainability. Uh, it's contribute to the recovery of valuable component from uh, food. So it actually can actually provide uh, the maybe recycle of uh, waste uh, to produce a value added product and so on. And uh, water efficiency, as we know, low uh, water need to be used because just the water inside the chamber and there is no cooling or uh, chilling required uh, for high pressure processing because uh, no heat or very um, medium heat is being used. And, and, and the rest uh, is actually energy uh, efficiency. Uh, minimal energy consumption has been shown for using high pressure processing compared to conventional uh, treatment for sterilization. And food security, so of course with the uh, high pressure processing, it will increase the food yield uh, because of the retention of the uh, product and also the retention of the retention of the nutrient of the product. All right. Okay. So next, we are going to talk about the uh, case study that I will present today. Uh, this is actually for um, high pressure processing of fresh milk. All right. So uh, this is what we have done uh, in um, UPM basically. We have a fresh cow in our farm and that farm, uh, we collect the, the milk and then we process using high pressure processing at 600 megapascal for 25 degrees Celsius and 10 minutes, all right? And we do uh, the analysis uh, for 60 days storage at 6 degrees Celsius for, and we check for the microbi microbiological analysis, uh, physical chemical analysis and vitamin and also mineral analysis to see is there any different after processing and during the six. 60 days of storage, all right? And we, we, we can see that uh, uh, the effect of HPP treatment, uh, there are a few things that is being explained there as well, but we're going to look at that uh, more detail in the next slides, all right? So uh, from that, uh, uh, what we call the um, milk that is being processed by high pressure processing, we can see that there's a, like a, a high log reduction, like four log reduction for total plate count, uh, and actually the uh, the what we call the colony doesn't uh, increase much during the storage for 60 days. Similarly, for the um, total yeast count from about uh, two log to uh, undetected level, and it doesn't uh, regrowth over time for 60 days. And similar result was seen for psychotropic uh, bacteria uh, for 60 days as well. And you can see that it's about seven to seven log to zero log uh, detection, meaning undetected. So uh, over the 60 days as well, there is no regrowth of psychotropic microbes, all right? So we can see that uh, from this, the conclusion is that we can reduce and no regrowth of microbes was seen during that 60 days of storage after high pressure processing of milk uh, at 600 megapascal, 25 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes, all right? And then, of course, this table also shows that there is no change is observed for vitamin. So meaning that before fresh milk is actually before high pressure processing and then you have the high pressure processing, there is no change in the value. So that is actually uh, conclude that uh, no change is observed so we can have all the vitamins that is available in the, in the uh, fresh milk uh, to be uh, available in the pro end product after preservation. And next is on mineral. There is no change as well in uh, observed in mineral. This is after and uh, before and after the process. So fresh milk is the white uh, bar and the black dark bar is HP, uh, the high pressure processed. We can see that there is no change basically for all the um, uh, uh, specific um, uh, minerals, potassium, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, zinc, and selenium. So you can see that you can see that there is uh, uh, no change for vitamin, no change for mineral as well. And in terms of energy consumption and carbon emission, we can say that uh, with this, uh, because this is actually by using this 55 liter high pressure processing, which is the um, uh, industrial uh, scale uh, high pressure process uh, equipment. Uh, and this is actually comparing with the uh, extended shelf life at 125 degrees Celsius, very high temperature at four seconds, uh, high temperature and short time. Um, and of course, you can see generally uh, electricity consumption is high for HPP, but because 
all of the uh, equipment is using electricity, ESL may be a bit lower, uh, but the utilities cost were, were, were drastically reduced for high pressure processing compared to uh, uh, extended shelf life uh, at 135 degrees Celsius for 4 seconds because of the uh, need of uh, water to heat, uh, steam to heat, water to cool and to chill. All right? And also directly we can see that uh, carbon dioxide emission for high pressure processing is very uh, is low compared to the extended shelf life due to the heating required for extended shelf life where you need to have a lot of like uh, energy to produce uh, the steam uh, which actually can uh, relate to the uh, high carbon dioxide emission all right so um, in conclusion um, we can say that uh, capital cost for high pressure processing is high compared to ESL however the benefit uh, on nutrient security, clean level uh, production and environment is better compared to ACL in long run. Okay? So this is unpublished data from our work. Uh, hopefully this can be published later. Uh, we'll see that. All right. So And this work has, actually is being done by uh, through SuperPro design software um, uh, simulation and the use of energy tariff in Malaysia. So maybe different country will have a different uh, interpretation to the energy consumption and carbon emission for uh, each of the uh, products and types of uh, par uh, parameters of processing. Right? So finally, in conclusion, we can say that sustainable food processing is the production of food uh, in an environmentally friendly, socially responsible manner. Uh, also reducing the use of resources and preserving the nut uh, nutritional quality of the food. So these are the three things that uh, we need to uh, think about when we think about sustainable food processing. And also as the case study uh, has shown and other uh, report from literature as well, HPP can, can be an alternative uh, to conventional thermal treatment for sustainable food production. And finally, as we can see, a lot of uh, things uh, happening through that uh, uh, energy consumption uh, and also the utility consumption, HPP reduced the impact of environment through reduction in utilities, steam, cooling water, chill water that is required in extended shelf life and also reduced in carbon emission compared to conventional thermal treatment. All right. So basically, I hope from this talk, you can get the idea of what is non-thermal processing, specifically high pressure processing, and also what is sustainable food production. So by that, thank you very much for, for listening to this uh, video. Thank you very much again.